Good morning. Can I ask you, what are you facing today? What are you facing? Are you facing sickness? Are you fighting sickness? Are you fighting anxiety? Are you fighting fear? Uh, are you fighting financial hassles? Uh, do you have problems in your marriage or your relationships? Uh, do you have issues on other, in other areas of your life? I mean, are you, what are you fighting? And have you really looked at the scripture as far as your fight is concerned? What does the Bible say about your current predicament, about the current thing that you're facing? I just completed a little production uh, that I've done for radio that's called The Wavering Saint. And um, this is the biggest secret in the kingdom of God that I've seen over a 30 year period. This is the most destructive thing is when the enemy gets us into a position of wavering, into a position of being unsure. And what I, what I also discussed in that teaching is the primary demonic strategies. What does the devil use? What does he use to get us to the point where we waver? Uh, the primary scripture that I, that I spoke of there is the scripture in James that we all know very well. We know James chapter 1 verse 2 to 8. We know the scripture very well. But the fact is, how are we managing our lives? How are we managing our kingdom lives now here on earth? What did Jesus give for us on the cross and how are we applying that in our lives? That's what I'm asking. It says here in James 1, 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith, faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, that you may become mature, complete, not lacking anything. So it says you're in a trial, you're facing something. He says, consider it joy, because this will turn out for maturity's sake. You will grow in this trial. You will become better, not better. But then he says, if you lack wisdom, if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously. Now, and I ask myself the question, what has wisdom got to do with the trial? The fact is that wisdom is the ability to see things as they really are. Wisdom gives us insight so that we can see. And that's why I'm asking you, what are you facing today? What is the trial? What is the tribulation? What are you facing? What is the difficulty? And what does wisdom say? What are you seeing in terms, not with the eyes of the physical, not with the eyes of the natural, not with the limitations of the circumstances and the situations, but what are you seeing as far as wisdom is concerned? And then it says there, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubts is like a wave in the sea. He's a wavering man. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a double-minded man is unstable in everything he does. And this is what, what, what the message was about that I recorded this morning. The wavering saints. It talks about us facing the reality of our circumstances without the wisdom without the knowledge of Christ, without being in a position where we understand what is actually happening in our lives. And today it is my prayer that we will discover God's will. I mean, we, we, we know that the first primary strategy that the enemy uses against us is a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of knowing what is going on in our lives. Uh, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we know that uh, we have to come to the knowledge of Christ, the full measure, the full knowledge of Christ, so that we can know how to respond. And I've got so many testimonies, testimonies throughout my life where circumstances said one thing. The trial was one thing, but I had to maintain faith. In other words, I had to believe in the trial so that I could go through the trial and not end up being a wavering saint, not end up being wavering in every area and if you want this full message I, I think it's going to I'm, I'm still editing it but I think it's going to be about a 18 minute message if you want the full message there's some scriptures in there there's some things that are saying there you can just join our whatsapp uh, distribution list As many of you are on there already but if you're not on there you can send me a whatsapp to 083 275 6546 6546 and let me end off with this. The reason why I felt this in my heart this morning, I believe, is that I see so many saints being robbed, so many Christians being robbed of what God has for them here. I see people dying prematurely. I see lives ended because we have a lack of knowledge a lot of times. 
The second one that I mentioned is we get confused. We get confused and what confuses us is the circumstances. Like I said yesterday, we get seeds of disappointment. We get to a point where we don't understand what is going on. And then it's imperative for us. It's so critical for us to really have a clear vision of what God has for our lives. In order to possess the promised land, in order to possess what God has for us, we need to know what that is. And we need to know how are we going to move into a strategic position, aligning ourselves with heaven so that we can possess what God has for us. You know, God has so much more. Let, let me say it to you. you. You can believe what I say today. God has so much more for you. But there are areas in your life now, at this stage, where the enemy has, has brought possibly confusion, possibly a lack of knowledge. And those are the areas where the enemy will continue to steal, kill and destroy until we rise up. And I've said this many times throughout the years. There's been many valleys of decision. There's been many times in my life where I had to make a decision based not on circumstances, not on situations, not on what I'm seeing, but based on what I know. And then I had to act according to the word rather than the circumstances and the situations. You see, this is what this is what James talks about when he talks about perseverance. He's not talking about somebody who's in limbo and so shocked that they can't move. He is talking about somebody who is pursuing Christ and taking hold of Christ for what Christ took hold of them in the first place. He's talking about somebody that is breaking through in the areas of life. And more than ever now, we have threat of disease. We have threat of finances. And we need to understand the will of God in those areas. We can't live in confusion as far as that is concerned. Because the enemy will smell confusion. Have you ever faced an animal or a dog? And, and uh, you've had this period. I had it once when I was running where a dog was chasing me. And, and I went and I stood still. And then the dog was standing at a distance and barking at me. But I, what I could see was this dog was looking at my body language this dog was looking for weaknesses and it's the same that the devil does to us he looks at us to try and see where he can still kill and destroy and if there are areas in our lives when we where we don't have knowledge where we have a lack of knowledge if there are areas in our lives where, where we become confused and we don't know how to react in those circumstances we become unsure of what God's will is in those areas we don't know what God wants those are the areas that the enemy will come in and steal, kill and destroy. So the wavering saint is the, is the biggest secret to kingdom failure. It is when the enemy can get us to waver in those circumstances and situations. And I really trust that you will do the due diligence. And that's why we have Bible school. It's not to, to give people qualifications. It's not to say to people that you are a pastor now or you're a prophet or you're an evangelist or give them titles. No, the, the, the purpose of the Bible school is to equip the saints for the work, to equip us to the point where we know the truth. Uh, like it says in, in, in John 8, where we know the truth, John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is to turn us into disciples like it says in John 8, 31. That it says, if you are, if you hold to my teachings, you are truly my disciples. To get people to study the word to the point where we respond not according to circumstances, but we respond according to the covenant agreement that we have with Jesus. We have a covenant agreement. We have a relationship. We have covenant rights. And we need to find out those things. If you don't know those things now, at this stage, at this dispensation of the prophetic timeline, you are in danger of being murdered by the enemy because the devil is murdering and killing people left, right and center without them and their family even being aware of it. He's come to steal, kill and destroy and he's destroying people's lives because there is a lack of knowledge. I talk about a few things in, in this teaching. I talk about disobedience. I talk about hurt. I talk about bitterness. I talk about unforgiveness. I talk about those things that the enemy is using to get us into a wavering position so that we become unsure of who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us and of what we are capable of doing with the power of Christ. So I really trust that you will step into the power areas of the Spirit 
that you will allow the Holy Spirit to start functioning through you. And when you are facing your trials and your situations, even this morning, I want to challenge you. As you are looking at these things today, you might be watching tonight or tomorrow or whenever you watch. But at this moment, as you consider your ways, as you consider your life, I want to ask you to start taking authority. I want to ask you to start searching the scripture and to see what the word of God says about what you are seeing in the physical. And if what you are seeing is not aligning with God's word, if it's not aligning with God's word, then I want to challenge you to take authority in those areas, to build yourself up in your most holy faith, to, to, um, to strengthen yourself by reiterating those promises all the time, reiterating those promises until the manifestation comes. Sometimes it is acting totally against what you are seeing, totally against what you are hearing. You are acting on God's word. And then you see the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit released into that situation. Uh, in many cases, we have brothers and sisters that can stand with us. But the final battles, the darkest battles that you and me are going to have to fight are going to be alone. It's going to be us and the Holy Spirit against the forces of the enemy. And you better get ready. If there's one thing in the Spirit that I see now, is we have to get ready today to stand against the enemy. So I really trust that none of you listening will end up sitting in a wavering position. And none of you will be robbed of what the devil is trying to steal, kill, and destroy in your life. You will not allow the enemy... He is prowling, it says in 1 Peter, he's prowling like a roaring lion. He's looking who he can devour. And many of us are devoured because of the lack of knowledge. And some of us are, are devoured because of the lack of application of knowledge, because we are not doing, we are not doers of the words. We, we're not doing what God has told us to do. But let me tell you, he's already been defeated. And if you find out who you are in Christ, the enemy is going to run out of every area of your life. You, let me prophesy to you today that if you allow God's word to, to, to grow in your life, like the parable of the sower, you are going to see an increase in every area of your life. You are going to see breakthrough in every area of your life. But these are things that you and I, we have to stand upon God's word. We have to know uh, what we stand upon uh, we know about the man that hears the word and that does the word. The Bible says that this man is on the rock. And now more than ever before, we can't waver. We have to be on the rock. We have to be found on the rock in the name of Jesus. And may you and I stand on the rock Christ when the storms of life come. Not if they come, when they come. Because we know they're here. We've experienced those storms. We, we experience them on a day-to-day -day basis in our lives. But we are standing on the rock, which means that those storms, they can do nothing to us. In Jesus' name, God bless you. May God take you from glory to glory.